Howdy folks, uh, just hanging out with my son here, Ivan, and uh, you know, we're always looking for something new to do. Yeah. Huh? Did you, did you hear something? Yeah, in the garage. There's a, there's a noise in the garage. I think we better investigate. Oh, look what we have here. Hi, Mia. Hi. How's my daughter doing? Good. Boy, this is a really nice 2019 Can Am DS250 you got here. You like it? Yeah. But one thing I, I want to do in my quad is to get it faster. Faster? Did you say faster? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, why is that? Because I want to keep up to my big brother. You want to keep up with your big brother, Ivan? Yeah. What's he driving? Oh, a Honda 400EX. Well, that might be a bit of a challenge, but you know what? I think we can make some adjustments here. I think we can get you back in the game, and it's all going to start right here. So folks, as some of you may know, this is part two of a two-part series on this quad right here. Uh, in the first series, we put a smaller front sprocket on it, and uh, we moved up two jet sizes on the carburetor. Um, that helped immensely on uh, some of our speed runs that we did. But now we're going to make two more adjustments to really bring this quad up to its full uh, potential. Wow. A quick note of interest is that if you can stick around to the end of this video, you will be rewarded because we're going to break out the stopwatches. We're going to take the Can-Am out on the straightaway here and we're going to time it and compare it against its stock performance. So at the end of this video, you can see exactly how much performance increase you're getting out of this uh, modification here where we remove the red carburetor spacer. I think one of the main factors in holding this quad back is the throttle travel. Uh, the thumb throttle, as you see it working here, it's not actually able to travel very far. The little stop right here doesn't even hit the other stop. Go ahead and work the throttle a little bit. Put it in full throttle. See, it comes short of the stop. It's only got like about uh, maybe two-thirds travel there and it's not you want it to come all the way up against that stop right there so our first plan of attack is to access the carburetor and remove the dreaded red carburetor spacer for maximum travel throttle so our plan is to rotate this carburetor out this way we're going to take these two nuts off. There's one here and one on the other side. And then loosen this squeeze clamp up here so we can rotate the carburetor and get up here where we want to get to. Okay. Get it down here. Where we can get to the top here and we spin this off right here. Okay, we got this spun off. Oh, look at that. There it is. The infamous red spacer. Okay. This is really, you have to be careful not to accidentally cut one of these springs here when you're cutting this off. So there it is. Had to really do a hack job to get it off of there. But fortunately, I never cut into any of these springs here. So it's out of there. One more thing, this needle itself has to go down in and fit in that little hole in the bottom down there. 
So you wanna make sure that that needle seats down into that hole perfectly. And then we should be good to go. See the top of the carburetor slide? It has to go seat all the way in here. If it just stops short, then that means things aren't lining up properly. This has to seat itself all the way into, into the barrel. Okay, we got it seated all the way down inside there. And now we can screw the top on. Go ahead. Move it up a little bit right there. Okay, so the moment of truce here to see if we have, you know, full travel. Look at that. All the way over till it hits that metal stop right there that metal stop so it's i would say it's at least 30 or 35 percent more throttle travel now okay the proof is in the proof is in the pudding here and we're gonna do a timed run the length of a football field and we'll compare it to our previous times and see if we've picked up some performance But for the record, we took it out about two months ago in completely stock trim, ran it in the 100 yard dash, and it did a pathetic 10.9 second run. So at this point, we went down one size on the front sprocket to give it more takeoff power, and then up two jet sizes, and then we removed the uh, spark arrestor. This is all seen in our previous video we did on part one. That gave us a pretty good increase from 10.9 down to 8.4. So we knew we were heading in the right direction, but we wanted more. Okay, folks, the moment we've been waiting for, we are finally ready for the final timed run <laughs> to see just how much improvement we're gonna gain with the removal of the carburetor spacer. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Super, super happy with that, and by far the biggest gain of all came from the removal of the carburetor spacer. Just also wanted to point out that I gave my daughter lots of t riding time on this bike to get used to it before the power increases. This is a KFX dual exhaust, KFX Kawasaki 700. Let's see how it sounds. <laughs> 